Monica. I want my daddy's record. We are live. We are live. We are back live. We took a break. We took a break. What we kind had of break to. did we take? We had to take a break. Uh, we took a break because we needed to. I was we, trying to take a break from COVID. We were going 95 South. Hmm? Like, uh, like we did a lot in December. We did a lot. 95 South, that's a long giveaway right like, there. Yeah, we, we did a lot. We want to go we 95 South. So we had to take a break break to rest recuperate um re-strategize and all that good type of stuff but y'all know how it is breathe know in what, count to seven y'all know what we do right breathe out count right? to ten so in this wonderful world of youtube if you guys are just now coming across the, us and you've never ever never ever ever girl don't nobody know you you never heard of us before okay uh we are rufus and jenny triplet co-authors of the best-selling book Surviving marriage in the 21st century, 13 easy tips to help you get to 20 years and beyond. And, you know, we have a milestone coming up next month. Next month makes eight years that we have since we've published this book. And we're going to be doing some really cool stuff around this. Eight years. Can you believe that? Eight years. Eight know. years. Eight years since we published this book. Okay. All right. And then we have the workbook that goes with that it. seem like about eight years. Getting back to the swoon of the honeymoon. Y'all see us over there swooning? Ain't we, nobody swooning, swooning up in here. Swooning. I told you. Okay. 25 ways in 25 days, which means that there are, look, there's exercises in this book. It means that you got to put in the ain't, work. Ain't no push-ups in there. You got to put in the work to get your. Ain't going to make nobody do no mountain climbers and nothing. You know, get your stuff, yourself back together and all that good type of stuff, right? And then we got, then we got, we got the card game. Okay, y'all see that? Surviving marriage, couples we card, card game. game. 99 questions for one great conversation, right? Y'all see that, right? So we are all about couples and um, helping, giving you tools, giving you resources and different things to get your relationships together. Get your marriage right. What happened to my dog? What? I used to have a dog. That was years ago we hmm? had a dog. Years ago. I was saying. Years ago. You bring it. Why are you bringing up old stuff? You bringing hmm? up old stuff. That used to be like my whistle. Old stuff. I don't know why the dog didn't come. See, I say old left and didn't come back. I say old stuff because if you guys don't know, we've been married 31 years. Must have treated him bad. 30. That's 30 plus what? 30. 30 Be 31. Kind to animals. 31 years. Okay. So we have a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of history. And in that history, we've had to work on our marriage. Hmm? I had to work on my speech. You had to work on yourself. I had to work on my speech. Work on yourself. I didn't know how to talk around here. Right. Well, and speaking of talking. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know how to of, talk now. Speaking of talking, some of the conversations that should have, have been had. Mm -hmm. wasn't, me, wasn't me. Before marriage. Wasn't me. Is about six. So if you guys have little ones in the room, uh, you might want to either turn the volume down or put them someplace else. Put your headphones up. Well, where are my headphones at? I don't want to hear this. We're going to talk about some stuff. Girl. Okay. We're going to get into Keep some, it clean. Stuff, some stuff that Keep needs to be talked about. Keep it clean up in here. Stuff that needs to be talked about. And we're going to bring on our special guest because she finna, you know, get into it. All right. So we are talking with the healthy sex expert we talking about intimacy we ain't talk about not like no dr ruth stuff y'all remember dr ruth mm -hmm. you remember dr ruth do i need to remember dr ruth? you remember dr ruth right now we're gonna talk about some healthy stuff in a healthy way and actually why muslims should be talking about this okay so our special guest today is my sister angelica well, that was a Ali. pretty long intro excuse me excuse me i'll get to the point Assalamu alaikum, aka Village Auntie. What's up? Assalamu <laughs> salam. And I, I gotta say to Rufus, shout out to Blind Mellow Jelly. I caught that. <laughs> <laughs> she, she <laughs> knows. <laughs> she <laughs> know, it's, it's one of my favorite episodes. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's amazing how you always get him. You always hmm? get him. So, yeah. Oh, girl. It, it's amazing. Shoot, I get her. <laughs> well, you know what, sis? We talked. Um, sometime last year and we're still in a pandemic <laughs> we were in a pandemic then and we're still in a pandemic now and it's you know 
the whole game has got to change because we're used to getting out to the people. You know what I'm saying? We're you, we're used to what, what we do. You know, we're used to getting out to the people and we can't afford to get sick. Yo, we <laughs> we can't afford this. So looking now, how far out are you looking into 2021 and what are you doing as far as changing and still being able to do what you do? That's a great question. I think I started to pivot early because um, I work in public health. A lot of people don't know that, like, they think Village Auntie is like my full time job, but I also um, am an executive manager for a public health um, organization. So, late February, early March, we're directly funded by the CDC. We started hearing murmurings that, you know, you need to really slow down and, you know, shift your work pace. So, Last Ramadan, I started with the online classes and creating virtual spaces for sisters. And it's been really successful because a lot of the women that follow my work don't live in the United States or they don't live in places that are easily accessible to me. Uh, I wish I had like million miler status and I could just go wherever I want to, <laughs> but I can't. So it's, I think I'm going to continue with that virtual format. Uh, it's not the same. There are certain topics that I can't discuss and won't discuss in virtual spaces, and we'll probably get into that a little bit later. But for right now, I'm forecasting maybe fall of 2021, starting with very, very small, intimate groups. Um, but I'm just, I'm just trying to stay as malleable as possible because I can't afford to get sick. I have four small children. Mm -mm. I work in public health. I work with people whose health is compromised. And, you know, to be honest, I think I've been able to recreate that intimacy that we have in person online. It's not the same, but it's the best that we have right now. So I'm just going to roll with it. Okay. Well, hey, you bet, okay. we better not get comfortable. Yeah. You know, Rona got mutations going on. You, you don't know what's, what's what you're going to get. Exactly, exactly. And we, we have some things in the works right now that we have not been privilege to share uh, with people, but you guys always know that when we make an announcement, like it's really fabulous. I wasn't so, trying to share it with myself. We're, yeah. <laughs> we're just saying we're behind the scenes right now with uh, working on our stuff, but when we come, when we come out, Okay, y'all just, coming be, ready. Coming out? Just, be, ready. Coming out? just be ready for it. Okay, I don't so come out now. inshallah, 2021 is going to be a really good year for, for Rufus and Jenny. Really good. Okay. Okay. Really, really good. Okay. I okay. ain't coming out though. <laughs> All right. So we're going to start backwards, backwards. Okay. So let's talk about some of the success stories that you've actually had and some breakthroughs that you've had with doing this work. You mean with couples or just personally? Any of it. However you want to go with it. Uh, I think the biggest success this year is for my 45th birthday. I turned 45 in September. Uh -oh. uh, two things. One, I went on a solo vacation by myself. No husband, no children. Wow. I didn't do any work. I did not <laughs> talk about anything related to Village Auntie. I did not talk about anything related to my day job. And I just had fun and I slept and I ate. And I rested and I got to hang out with girl, girlfriends. And that's that's major for me in terms of a work milestone because I never mm -hmm. allow myself to do that. So I'm going to count that as my first success. Okay. I slowly <laughs> My second success that is also around my birthday is I launched the Village Auntie Institute. And so the Village Auntie Institute is a, is a certifying organization that will allow me to equip women in communities across the world to be able to take sexual health information um, sensuality workshops, empowerment workshops to women in their communities. And I'm really proud of that because I think as a black woman, uh, it's important that I put some validity behind the work that I do. Uh, and I think that it's something that is a model that other women, I hope, will follow. We don't need somebody else to certify us. We can certify ourselves. Right. So that's what I'm mm -hmm. trying to do. Why? We, we are enough. We, we are, are enough. Yeah. Well, where your but certificate at? But is it? Oh, I'm certified. Certify look, yourself. Look, I'm bona fide. I'm verified, and I'm certified. Yeah, but that other dude thought I had to certify so you. I don't know where he got else, that from. Anything else? You, you need, need to, to know. certify me, then. No. Okay. 
there's all of that work with us. And then see, we're always trying to get like to the next platform, the next platform, but actually you're creating that platform because you are the next platform. For people who haven't done this work or haven't been introduced to you or even know how to do this work or have those conversations, you are the next platform. So, yay. Kudos. <laughs> okay, so you mainly cater to women. Mm -hmm. Pretty much women. That's that's it. Oh, ever didn't she taking she vacations? But have there ever been any men that have asked you for like serious, serious inquiries? And mm -hmm. okay, I, well, I was can I finish? I was inquiring. Now, see, what if I was going to ask just her? To what if I was going to ask her if they wanted to, you know, her to cook them some tacos? Well, so I you was, don't even know what the question about to be. I'm, okay, I'm, I'm stopping inquiring right now. Okay. Though. My granddaddy was Mexican, so I can make a good taco now. <laughs> See what I'm saying? See? Okay. She got it covered. So if any men have, have, have inquired, you know, to, to work with you, like a serious inquiry, and what would be the caution in doing that? Uh, that's a great question. So I've had... Um, Several men who said, let's write a book together. Let's do a workshop series together. Let's do this. Let's do that. And I always pause because one, if you're just trying to get to me now, when you see me, you know, at a certain position, then that means that you're just looking for clout and I'm not, I'm not about that life. Uh, but there are men that I have worked with and will continue to work with. So I work with Dr. Kaiser Abdullah. We have a platform called Muslim Love Notes. And we don't really talk about sex together. We break the men and the women up into groups. But we talk about intimacy. We talk about relationships. He's an imam. He's been married for several years. And we approach the work as professionals. He also works in the field of psychology. And it's important for a man to talk to other men. Uh, when it comes to the sexuality side, Habib Akande is a teacher, a mentor, and a brother to me. And I hope, I hope and pray, inshallah, in 2021, that I'm able to go over to the UK and that we can do some workshops together. I don't have caution when it comes to working with Kaiser or Habib because they're professionals. They are men who um, have proper adab, not even just with me, but just period. I watch how people move in public, on social media, with other men that I don't know and for whom this is not their profession, I'm always cautious because I don't want to be, one, I don't want to be sexualized. I'm not saying I'm the most beautiful woman. I'm not saying I'm the sexiest woman. It really doesn't have anything to do with that. But when you are a woman and a Muslim woman and you speak as practically as I do about sex, you really have to be careful about how people perceive you. The other thing is I want to protect the women in my community. They know that from the beginning, this community is by a woman, for women, about women. And when I introduce men into the work, it's important that I don't introduce men who will then try to take over the platform. This is not, you know, this is not for them. This is for the women. So a lot of people have asked me, well, why don't you work with Imam so-and-so? Why don't you work with um, Brother brother so-and-so. And I don't do that because I'm not always sure of what people's motives are. So it's a great question. But one thing I will say, and I've said it in, in small spaces um, in other places, so I'm just going to put it out there now. This is, a, this is a much larger platform. In 2021, inshallah, I will be offering workshops for men. Uh, I do have, <laughs> and I feel a little bit shy to even say that because people are like, what? So I will have a workshop that will be for men and women to take together. Uh, and it will focus on coupledom. And mainly it's around working with couples who are married and who want to introduce some spice back into the relationship. Couples who are looking for a way to get rid of the doldrum because you can you can get into a routine so that will be a workshop that is specifically for couples who've been married five years and longer i'm really excited about that one and then i'll have another workshop for brothers just brothers this is the first time ever 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 work for outcast it's going to be just for brothers and it's going to be focusing on emotional intimacy and how to build that muscle because i think that when men are given 
a fertile ground to express their emotions, they're masters at it. And I have a special um, co-instructor, I'm not gonna put his name out there just yet, uh, who said that he wanted to work with me on this because he said it's important for them to hear it from a woman, but it's also important for them to know that a man is also seeking this help. So he's a very, very well-known name. Uh, and he said, I want you to teach me first. I want you to give me the class first. And then once I get Ijaza, then we can teach it. So <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I think a lot of people totally misunderstand when there are issues that come to married couples, you need a male and a female perspective. I mean, that is just uh, when we got into this space, that is one of the very first I things. Say, I that, actually don't see no other way to do it. Yeah, well, that we were saying because, you know, I listen, I listen to lectures and lectures and lectures, different imams and different stuff like that or whatever. And I would always hear, you know, well, my wife, da, 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 da. And I would be like, well, where's your wife? Why can't, you know, I talk to your wife, you know, how I know that's what she say, how she feel or how it's interpreted from your wife. You know, what is your wife really saying? You know, and there was there was a lack of, you know, females representing as far as marriage and different things are concerned or you would I, have. I think they probably they, they were more concerned about something being halal or not. A lot of times when I talk to them, it's about whether it's halal or not. But again, for most of marriage talks, um, again, I don't see how you can do it from just one perspective. Right. And how you can negate that. And then on the opposite side that I would see females um, speaking different um, female scholars or, you know, different people. And it, once again, it's just a female, you know, and I'm just like. You know, even when I when I see like the LMFT, the the uh, family therapist, the marriage and family therapist, and is that an acronym things, or something? Don't, licensed marriage and family don't be therapist. Dang on okay, up in here. but um, and them, and it's either a male or it's a female, and I'm like, well, you're giving textbook, you know, science, but that does not necessarily. That, and I'm and and I'm always wondering, well, how does that work in your relationship? You know, why can't I ever see you? On, I always want to know how it works yeah. in your relationship. Why can't I ever see you on an interview with your spouse to see if they agree with that or if you are actually applying just like all of the textbook science to your mate? You I know, don't think I, it's I don't think it's necessary when you're giving fic or when you're giving dawa, but I do believe it's necessary when you're giving instruction or if you're advising. So in those particular realms, I believe it's very important to uh, get, how, well, how does that work for, for you? you? Exactly. Because a, a, as females, we are definitely emotional creatures. We are emotional creatures and a lot of things that we do stems from emotion and that includes sex. So, you know, if you're having a conversation, my father with, ain't no female, he's and, emotional. And just with a man, I mean, it's, it's, it's totally different. I mean, it's totally different. Now I'm getting off on a tangent, but I'm going to try to stay right here because we have a whole conversation about that. But let's talk about uh, weight and sex. And I'm not saying this personally in regards to you, but I'm talking Ooh, about. Please don't make it personal. But I'm talking about. I don't think about it from a personal perspective, too. Yeah. But oh, because she nah, see, she gonna be she gonna tell the truth. Yeah, she gonna keep it real. She, she telling it from personal, right? Believe that. But let's talk about weight and sex because mm -hmm. I, a lot of thing things. Uh, I think something that a lot of people don't know that we do. We talk to a lot of brothers as far as looking for marriage, and there's this specific preferences. Like women have these preferences, sisters have these preferences, men have these preferences, and a lot of it has to do with weight. Mm -hmm. A lot of them has to do with weight, and trust me, they could be. You know, Uncle Ted, like you Who's know, Uncle Ted? you know, I ain't got no Uncle Ted. Uh, the Nutty Professor, you know, up in here, and they looking for a Janet Jackson. So it, it, it's like the whole oh, yeah, the scope. Bro, the bro, the bro, the bro, yeah, he wasn't yeah, right. Yeah, they be the he whole right. scope as far as that's concerned. But is there a direct connection to overweight and bad sex, and even underweight and just troublesome sex? Uh, from my perspective, I think what we see as a societal norm is very different than what 
plays out in terms of people's actual expressed desire. So I just had a conversation with a brother from the UK about this last week. And we were talking about this rise in a certain type of body style that a lot of men, especially younger men, are going after, right? They want an extreme hourglass shape that in many ways is very unnatural, very, very small waist, very wide hips, you know, large butt, big breasts, right? And we talked about- You know about where that. it comes from. Right. I, we, we know where it comes from. Mm -hmm. But then on the flip side, right? So this, this is what is socially acceptable. This is what is socially fashionable. And sisters who have that body type, along with a certain um, skin color, along with a certain hair texture, they fit this ideal, right? But when it comes down to what I won't say what all men, but what a lot of men really want, it can actually be the opposite of that. A lot of men like a fuller woman. And if we look back historically, women who are more full-bodied, right? And I mean full in every sense of the word, tend to be seen as more sexually desirable, more sensual. We can go as far back as the 15th and 16th century, whether you're looking at Europeans, whether you're looking at African people, and even when it comes to a lot of fetishes that men have, right? A lot of fetishes that men have often involve women who don't fit a socially acceptable norm of what is beautiful or what is desirable. And I'm saying that because a lot of sisters think, well, she's big. How could she pull him? And it's really not about size, right? It's about what does fullness signify from a cultural standard. So if we look at West African culture, uh, I'll never forget <laughs> the first time that I went to Ghana with my husband and we went to his best friend's mother's house. Now his best friend's mother speaks Hausa. She does not speak any English. She can understand it, but she doesn't speak any English. And the first thing that she said when she saw me was this long, I don't know what you said, but everybody laughed. And my husband laughed and he was kind of blushing a bit. And I was like, well, what, well, what did she say? He said, he said that she said to me, you know, I'm paraphrasing. He said, boy, Muhammad, you sure know how to go to market and shop. And I said, well, what does that mean? She's trying, trying to say that I eat a lot. Said, no, you sure know how to pick them, basically. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, within that context, and, and I, you know, and I was feeling bad. I was five months pregnant at the time. So I was very full, you know, I was, you know, I was, you know, I was a big girl, but it, it totally defied what the social norm was in America. Now, in terms of whether that equates to, so that's just desirability. Now, in terms of whether that equates to um, bad sex or good sex, we first have to talk about, well, what makes sex bad and what makes sex, sex good, right? Bad sex is rushing, not having any kind of connection to the person. Uh, if the brother has a poor stroke technique, uh, if the person does not have the stamina to participate fully in, in the sex session, right? <laughs> I'm losing it. <laughs> because I said stroke, look, look, I don't care how long. He, he, be, he be stroking. I'm losing it. <laughs> you, can't do like, you, know, you know, in the words of, of my fellow Detroit brother, John Witherspoon, you can't be in there like bang, bang, bang. You can't do that. You that doesn't matter what size you are. This is for the man or the woman. You right? You can have a big brother who has a super strong, dope stroke game, right? Very loving, right? Um, bad good sex. Good sex is when people can connect on what they both enjoy. So weight can come into play if it is affecting your libido, for example. So if you are a person who's eating a lot of fried food, you're eating a lot of sugar, um, a lot of saturated fats, you're not getting a lot of exercise. It's not that you're overweight, it's that you're not properly nourished. So you're not giving your body the proper nutrients. Sex is exercise. Sex burns it calories. Is. It does. Is now with all this bad food, then the sex is going to be bad. And it's not going to be bad necessarily because you're overweight. It's going to be bad because you're not properly nourished. Now, in terms of being underweight, I have heard from brothers that, oh, my wife has lost too much weight. I don't have enough cushion for the pushing, right? I don't have enough. You know, I like to, there's certain sex positions I want to be in. Hold on, hold on, hold on. wait a minute. Hold on. 
you got all the t-shirts. Dope stroke <laughs> game, not enough cushion for the pushing. Yeah, I'm a marketing major, so I'm just like, I'm looking at it's like you got all the t-shirts. But uh, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. But, but it's but it's true, right? And I think sometimes when people are underweight, right? And and underweight is overweight and underweight are very subjective extremely subjective. It, it totally depends on the person and the place. But I remember when I was literally half the weight that I am now, um, I was very thin and I was in good, I was in good shape. Right. So, you know, sex was great, but I also remember being very thin and not eating regularly, um, trying to eat a vegan diet that was not well balanced. So I was, I would, you know, intimacy was difficult for me because I was not properly nourished. So I think on both ends, whether you're overweight, overweight or underweight, the effect that it has on sex first is how is your body being maintained? Um, sisters, so I'm going to say this and I probably shouldn't, but the song WAP um, that came out recently, I'm not going to say uh, what that acronym stands for. Sisters were talking about that video and I said, well, sis, if you're not drinking water, you're not going to have WAP. If you're not eating, you know, um, hydrating foods, you're not going to have that WAP. If your system is not alkaline, you can have WAP, but it could be smelly WAP. So there's lots of things that come into play that don't just deal with weight um, that we have to consider when it comes to sex. A lot of couples struggle because they prioritize the intimate relationship with their spouse, but they don't prioritize their own health which is why it's important to make sure that you're not just trying to look good on the outside, but make sure that you're treating your body well from the inside because all of that affects sexual function. Uh, I had a young man. Girl, I, I, I'll tell you what, I'm about to go eat me some oranges and bananas and pears. Yeah, but you, you have to all, and I don't mean to cut you off, but you have to put in perspective like all of what you said because when the when the first thing that's being talked about in regards to intercourse, it's mm -hmm. not your diet. It, it's not that's not like the first topic of conversation that anybody talks about is is your diet. You know. I mean, I understand that, but you know, oh, your diet brother, should be um, topic of conversation on a lot of subjects. Yeah, but you know, brothers are more interested in certain things, and even the conversation they have amongst themselves, and they talking about size and different stuff like that. And I heard then, some of the brothers say so they wanted to, they like a, a like thicker. You and his sisters, I you know, white paws, Rufus. Sisters like thicker too. Oh, can brothers, can brothers change? See that? See that's where the imbalance comes. Right? <laughs> Get my pythons ready up in here. I'm talking, I'm talking about these pythons. I'm talking about a different snake. Yeah, she talking about yeah. No. <laughs> but I'm but saying me no speak of English. <laughs> but, but that's where the imbalance comes in because sure, you're right. Brothers can talk about what they want physically in terms of a woman's physique. But there are a lot of sisters who might say, well, I want a brother who's longer or who's thicker or who's, you know, the body that can't be changed, that can't be altered. Easily. That's right. right. That's but, right. But also, let me ask you from an Islamic perspective, you don't get you are not out here shopping. You ain't, you know right, what I'm right, saying? Right, You so can't be shopping for that you want yeah, it longer. Okay, or you yeah. want it. A brother shouldn't be out here shopping either. No, I, 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 I'm talking about both sides. I'm not okay. talking about, you know, right. one side. I, you, you well, know. I mean, because a lot so, of me, yeah. I, I married, if, if, <laughs> if me and her was the divorce, I'm marrying someone who has Dean. I'm I, I'm looking for that first and foremost before anything, anything else. in yeah, my so life at it's this not point. Necessarily like you can learn how to love somebody. You can learn what play yeah. what pleases someone. You can get you can get through that together. But you can't. It, it ain't no. It's not a shopping list right. on what right. what you so, want. So what I was saying in regards to diet is like that conversation doesn't doesn't come around. Even if you were having like a sexual overtone, and mind you, we have we have supervised or chaperoned some conversations with people, um, you know, intentions as far as marriage and stuff like that. So we didn't. Yeah, they were letting me know a little bit too we, much. Yeah, we didn't. We didn't hear some stuff. But trust me, the conversation, the sexual overtone conversation, was never about diet. 
you know, but that is a good oh, indicator. Oh, I don't think diet ever <laughs> came up. up. Right. In, in that's one a good, conversation. good so indicator. You, yeah, you hit that on the button, but sis. That's a good indicator to to know as far as, it, like, if you're taking care of your body, what your sex life is, you know, if you're uh, looking at somebody you're intended to be, that what your sex life is going to be because if you're taking care hey, of yourself. Hey, hey so, so from now on on y'all list, yeah. men and women, you got to say, are you eating apples, oranges, <laughs> pears, <laughs> berries, <laughs> berries, of every, berries of every kind? Yeah, figs, you, you, you know. How much fried foods do you eat? Right, right, right. You know, when the last time you <laughs> ate a Big Mac right. or a burger? Yeah. When the last time you yeah. How about how often do you work out? And this is especially important for brothers because an increase in, in um, testosterone, because some of these brothers are in the gym, get souped up and they're using supplements, an increase in testosterone can actually lead to erectile dysfunction. Mm -hmm. 100. Okay. I right. actually learned that. Right. So right. that is a good are you, lesson. Are you taking black seed or are you taking steroids? What you want, brother? What you do? Again, you know, these I, are important <laughs> questions. Look, you can like, actually ask these questions, questions and kind of right. find out what you need to know right, right, and not right, ask them you right. ask indirectly. So, so part two of the, uh, <laughs> the, the couple's game is going to be... Uh, the sexual edition, hmm? you know, and we're going to put some, oranges in there. Yeah, we're going to put some stuff up in here that needs to be talked about. You know what I'm saying? Because it's going to be for couples. Girl, don't yeah. be putting no Cinnabon up in there. It's going to be for couples. Hey, Cinnabon that's, hey, that could be one of them next questions. When's the last time you had a Cinnabon? You know, how often, I better go get me a Cinnabon before I start how, my regimen. How often do you eat donuts? You know, I mean, start asking the right questions. You know what I'm saying? Instead of, you know, how long is it? You know, you know what I'm well, saying? Well, first of all, if you ask that question, you're going to get a lie told to you anyway. anyway. So you need to just stick to what the sister said and find out what the brother's diet is. You know, so you know. Some of the brothers will say, well, sister, you know, I'm a grower, not a shower. So... <laughs> Oh, you got all the t-shirts. Okay. okay. <laughs> I've heard that one. I've heard I've heard a brother say this to a sister. And I was like, bro, I don't think that landed the way that you thought it did. So I just <laughs> need to I'm sure it did. You back that up. I'm back sure it, it did. <laughs> back it up. Okay. All right. Uh, let's talk about one of my favorite topics. Um, millennials. Those dog on millennials. Those they leave my pizza alone. Okay. So Them my one, of, right there now. one of our favorite topics, because that is really like the the bulk of our audience, uh, our millennials. A lot of millennials follow us. And they're they have a lot of misconceptions about sex. A lot of misconceptions. Definitely just and and I don't understand what that is. So I'm just wondering from your perspective, if, is that a parenting fault? Or is that a this mis a misunderstood expectation? I think it is a misunderstood expectation because the parents have not taught them about sex, uh, and this is across religions, but especially from people who come from very strong religious backgrounds, whether that's Christianity, whether that is Islam, whether that's even some families who are very strict with their practice of traditional African religions. There is a focus on modesty. There's a focus on chastity. Um, but then there's a focus on court on, on marriage, right? So it's like boys are haram, you know, girls are bad. Don't talk to girls. Don't bring anybody home. And then boom, you turn 21, you graduate from college, get married, bring me some grandbabies. So there, there's the, the expectation comes Ain't from some? knowledge. <laughs> what? Oh my goodness. What? what she is 100% correct. We ain't telling them nothing. Just after you get out of my house, where are my grandbabies at? You uh, ain't told these not people we, nothing. Because we had oh, very my children knew everything with our children. That so I could tell them. We. Don't put that we up in uh, here. Okay. That's them. Well, That's we out. Them folks not preparing their children mm. for the realities of the situation. Act like these people ain't thinking about it. Uh, Keep thinking that if you want. Uh -huh. You get a surprise. And then we tell and them about the lab being born. Hold up. And that's also why. We have a 27 and a 29 year old, but we don't have no grandkids, hmm? and we you ain't got oh, oh, and we ain't got no the... we ain't got no baby daddies either. How that's is also that the why that, that I just maybe they doing also, the right thing or something? Uh, because we had conversations with them, okay, 
Mm-hmm. You remember the earliest conversation? My earliest conversation was put on the Jimmy hat. That was not the earliest mm-hmm. conversation. Well, that was before either line. I did tell them to put on the hat. But that was not the earliest conversation. The earliest, when they were starting to experience, oh. they, they, they manhood. Oh, we talking about the fallopian too? They manhood. No kid want to hear about no fallopian too? Dude, your memory. Hmm? I swear, your memory. Okay. Oh, I remember. No, you don't let's remember. Get, you don't well, remember. Let's not get it twisted up in here. Okay. <laughs> I remember exactly what Wait, I told them, the boys. The earliest conversation mm-hmm. was when they started taking them long showers. Mm-hmm. Those they were take, the, my kids don't take long showers. Those were the they earliest. They did not take long the showers. Earliest they had a little bit extra dirt after playing football. Leave them alone. Mm-hmm. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> but, but yeah, I think I think that is part of it. So for millennials, what happens now is they have access to different ways of learning than we did. I'm Generation X. You know, I had a beeper in high school. When I was in high school and college, a cell phone got carried around in a bag, a big old bag. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. Yep. You know? The brick. The brick. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't afford one. Yeah. <laughs> and this is why I tell parents you have to teach them before they learn because they're going to learn from somewhere. I had a, a parent of a college student call me and tell me that she was upset that I, I said the word orgasm in a workshop. And I said the word orgasm because I was talking about one of the benefits of halal courtship, halal marriage, is that you have access to a range of physical experiences that are a blessing. I said, so imagine if you could get a blessing from having an orgasm with your husband. And she was so upset. And I'm talking to to college age women, some of whom are married, they're in their 20s, some of whom I know have actively been involved in relationships. And I'm talking to them about why they should save this for marriage. And she was upset about that. So I think, you know, we have this you know, puritanical approach to raising our children, but it's not practical when they are bombarded with sexual imagery every single day. So oh you have gosh. to teach them. You have to teach them. Oh my God. And, and they binge watch Netflix. But the, I mean, the, so if you're binge watching Netflix, you're going to get a little something, something. I mean, the sister's right. YouTube, I mean, YouTube, Snapchat, um, uh, Instagram. Uh, <laughs> Instagram, you have people on, on apps like Clubhouse, on Twitter. There are all types of visual imagery and, and, and sonic you know, access that people have to sex that we don't think about. And we think of sex as just being penis to vagina. There's so many different ways that people are, are having sex and figuring out how to you know, activate that pleasure center. We, got, we have to be on the offensive, not the defensive when it comes to this type of thing. I agree 100%. And what the sis is saying, because we're not, we don't have, we didn't advocate for our children to go out and have sex, but I wanted them to know about sex before they left my home, before they learned the wrong thing about sex. So as parents, we do an injustice to our children when we do not talk to them concerning sexual feelings, sexual Acts, about what things. their what their body is going to. They go gonna get through. married it, one day and they right. ain't gonna know and nothing. It, and it tells us, you know, in Quran that you know you're gonna have these urges, you're gonna have these feelings, you know, in regards to your body. So it's it's about figuring it out. So you leave your child just unstrapped with you know no knowledge. Like, what am I supposed to do with all of this? You know what? What's oh, really they going gonna on? figure out what to do, and then they're having conversations with their friends. I just want to be part of the solution. Yeah, they're having conversations with their friends and maybe getting some wrong information. Oh, you mine know, got some wrong information. I was like, "Who told you that, boy? Hold on, boy. Come on over here. Some I'm about things, to tell y'all some some things that they shouldn't be doing." And I, I definitely think that as as grown as what. Uh, I guess uh, America's standard of what grown is, you're 18 and you're grown, um, uh, is that parents really need to fall back some, fall back in their children's lives oh, because- I know how to fall back. Yeah, because you're not going you know, to to suppress and oppress your children. You're setting, them, you're setting them up for failure, but not only that, you're setting them up for unhappiness. Again, you are not- encouraging your children to uh, because a lot of people feel you're encouraging them to go out and have sex or commit this sin that is furthest from the truth again i don't have any grandchildren right now i gotta talk to them boys about that 
They mm-hmm. get in there. But oh, the, we on rush. In, in their time. In their own time. I want some grandbabies. I ain't trying to it be ain't, ain't about what gray you want. and, and ain't about what you want. decrepit yeah. hey. and my back hurt and I can't yeah. throw him up put in some, the air. Put some hen in that beard. Mm-hmm. You ain't got to be great. Put some hen in there. What in the dark okay, is going all, on around uh, here? Everybody who is viewing, now is the time for your questions. You guys see the comment box. Drop your questions in the comment boxes. We're going to take a few of those. We have a few more questions for the village auntie. We're going to let her get back to uh, what she does, but you know she does this too. So we're having a chit chat and we see you guys are uh, here, but chime in, drop your questions in the comment box and we will take a few of those um, from you guys. And just let us know, just let us know what you think of the discussion because you guys have been kind of quiet out there. All I'm saying is talk to your kids. Uh, again, mine, I told them as much as I could because I wanted them to know what I didn't know. I wasn't told a lot of things. I had to figure them out and find out on my own, which is fine. Uh, again, there were no specifics on um, uh, with this female, this is what you do, da 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 da. Like, let me ask, how did you come to, say, to a man. resolve with that parent that was upset with you? And do you have some type of, of waiver or people have to sign something in order to come to your classes or discussions? No, there's no waiver. They have to be 18 and older. And what the parent didn't know is her daughter was one of the people who actually invited me because, you know, I have a relationship with her daughter, um, a mentor, mentee relationship. And she was like, auntie, we need real practical conversation. I don't want, you know, just a religious conversation. I want a conversation from a Muslim about how to prepare for marriage, what to expect in marriage. So I just told the mother, she was wanting me to explain why I spoke the way that I did. And one of the things that I'm very clear about is I'm my own boss. I'm not going to be bossed by other people and I'm not going to explain what I do because it's evident what I do. I stand behind everything that I do. I don't use certain language. I don't use certain imagery. So there was nothing wrong with what I said. And she said, well, you know, I I would like to, to review the video. I said, you're more than welcome to review the video, but this is what I said. This was the context of what I said and tell me what, where, what I said was wrong. Well, it wasn't wrong, but you just shouldn't be misleading them. I said, the media misleads them. Um, uh, no, she, she wanted to see that video because she trying to figure out how to get an orgasm. That's what that was oh, all about. And, or she, she was, trying to figure out she, a way to make it a uh, <laughs> negative or try to figure out a way to uh, discredit. She, she was fishing. She was fishing for Without something. Without doubt. Without doubt. By the end of the conversation, she was like, oh, Michelle, love me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you for the work that you're doing. Because I told her, I said, sister, I am, she thought I was much younger than I was. I said, I have children. I have children. I have 16 nieces and nephews. I talked. She said, because would you talk to your children like this? I said, I have, and I do, and I will continue to do so. So I think she just... She didn't know where I was coming from, and she thought maybe that I was going to back down. And when I stood firm, she said, "She said, okay, now I understand. I understand, um, and I want to go back and watch it." Um, she didn't apologize, but she did make dua, and I'm fine with it because not everybody is going to like my method or approach, right. but I stand by it because I, I'm not leading people astray. Right, right. Hey, we hey, already know that. Let me know, give. Let me know. give some. Uh, parents or some young people who may have had children uh, look the whole thing is to let I let my children I'm tell you what I see I can't never go wrong when I tell you what I did but anyway I let my children know that it's whatever their friends told them it's not the same for every woman you're gonna have to once you get married you have to learn that woman and learn how to make your sex life uh, profitable, right? So again, letting letting them know these things ahead of time so they don't go into a, with a preconceived notion that they can do this thing that somebody told them and it was going it's going to work on their mate. Again, it, it it was just about letting mine know you're gonna have to figure that out when you get married. I'm going to ask you this before we take the question that's on the screen, um, because we're talking about parents and children. But at what age do you think is a good um, time to start like the sex talk? 
Um, so the sex talk has to start with talk about body parts because the sex talk is also about protection. Uh, it's about helping the child to establish ownership of their body. So I started at age four with all of my children with giving them the proper name for the body part that they had. And now I knew let me hold up. Let me let me tell you what somebody just heard. Oh my gosh, she started talking to her four year old about sex. That's what somebody just heard. See, then that ain't what I just heard. But that's not what we just heard. You know what I'm saying? But it's yeah, it's it's about people and how. They want to make something bad about this when it should be healthy. And, you know, and I, I want my four year old son to know that he has a penis and that that's what it's called. And that's what we call it, because if he comes home and he uses a different word for that, I'm going to know, well, who told you that's what it's called? Well, mm -hmm. where did you get that from? You know, I want him to know that this is your sacred body part that you don't need to share with anybody else. So don't run through the house like you used to do when you were two or three with your pull up. It starts with protection. Now my eight year old daughter, she knows body parts. And then I also got her a book and we have conversations about things like menstruation because she's going to have a menses. She's eight within the next four to five years, her period is going to start. I want her to know before it happens Girl. what is going to happen so that she doesn't look one day and say, oh my God, I used to be a school teacher. And I always knew when a girl started her period because she would come back from the bathroom either with her face completely white <laughs> or she would come back crying or she would say, I got to call my mama because nobody had prepared her for that. So I wanted my daughter to know about that. Now, in terms of actual sexual intercourse and what that means, that conversation, usually I have it around the age of 12 or 13, because in the schools, that's when they start having human growth and development classes. And so we talk about from an Islamic standpoint, what is sex? So, you know, I have Ijaz and Fiqh, so we talk about it from a Fiqh standpoint. We talk about where sex is appropriate, when it's appropriate, and that's within the confines of a halal marriage. And then I answer their question. So I have a 15 year old son. We first had that conversation when he was 12 and he thought it was completely gross. He thought it was disgusting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then at 14, he came home and he said, mommy, what's porn? And I said, well, where did you hear that from? He said, they're talking about it at school. And mm -hmm. so then we had that conversation. And mm -hmm. then at 14, he came home and he said, mommy, what's hentai? And hentai is a form of pornography that shows up in anime that he had gotten from his friends. But what wound up happening is, and then he came, you know, and I'm embarrassing him right now, but then he came at 15 and he said, mommy, I have hair growing down there. Is that normal? Mm -hmm. And I said, yes, son, let's have this conversation. He can talk to his dad. He can talk to me. But because we've had those open channels of communication, now as he's easing into those years where sex is going to become more interesting to him, he knows that he can come to us and we're going to give him non-judgmental, practical information. And Absolutely. Same thing yeah, we did buddy. with our boys. I tell Absolutely. You what, if he was taking five-minute showers and now he's taking 15-minute showers, watch out. Oh, so now you know about the showers, right? Oh, I, I now forgot. you know about the showers. Oh, no, okay, I just forgot so again. Know. Okay. I All just right. forgot. Diara, let's get to your question before we run out of time here. What is a good way to document oneself about sex before marriage? How to bring about the discussion about it with the future spouse? And thank you. And yes, we get into this all the time. Um, for... I, I'm not judging you, uh, Dier. I'm just giving some dawa here, but uh, in dawa terms for people who are watching, that's called uh, Zena. And we deal with this um, a lot um, with people that we that we speak with who, who are actually in relationships like right now. So it's nothing new, no judgment or anything oh, like that. Good. Nobody, because um, I, I got one judge that I got to stand in front of. And as and long as you I'm still right. are alive, you have time to correct your affairs. So, you know, Allah is the final judge in regards to that. But what we say in regards that, I mean, 100 percent honesty is the best way as far as with going to into any relationship, because it could come up at any time. You never know when someone from your past or anything can just come, you know, and just come into your life and mention things. So you don't want any type of secrets from you know your spouse or anything like that now if it's talked about in a derogatory way like body counts you know or different things like that i i don't you know suggest that but it needs to be an honest conversation because it's something that happened and it's you know people that can come 
uh, you know, into your life. Now, now, do I say that you give a full accounting like, OK, this was with Roger on the 14th and I was in Saudi and we was here. To, no, no. I, I say Don't I would just say, yeah, just, I, I had some previous you know, things that happen. I, you know, th it does not have if to they be. Ask, if they yeah. ain't ask me, I ain't telling you nothing. It does not have to be full. I'm a hush up in, in here. Detail, but that's what I have to say on it. Auntie, go ahead. <laughs> that, that, that's pretty much exactly what I would say. Um, I always tell sisters, you don't have to pretend that you're a virgin. Um, if you're not, uh, it's not a good way to start a, a relationship on a lie, mm -hmm. but you don't have to go into detail. And, and you know, it's mm -hmm. like, you know, my fiance is pressing me about the details. I said, well, that's a red flag. Oh, he got he, issues. He, he could be projecting some insecurity. Now, one thing yeah. that I do suggest, and I suggest this regardless of whether they've had sex or not, I suggest that they do a full panel STD and HIV test. Yeah, um, that's right. Definitely. There are lots of, there are lots, so, so when we talk about sex, I've, I found out that when people talk about sex, they mean one thing, but they've done like, Everything else but sticking yeah. in the hole, right? Right. You need right. to make <laughs> right, 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 right. You are protected. <laughs> yeah. You know, you one hundred sure protected. So, mm -hmm. but everything yeah. else you said yeah. is one hundred. And and they're angels. They're angels. Okay. So, <laughs> all right. Hope that hopefully that helps you, uh, Diara. Inshallah. Not give but, details. Yeah. Right. So, what would stop you? What would stop you from doing this work? I can't think of any illness where I couldn't speak, but as long as I could type, I could type it out. I don't think there's anything that can stop me um, from doing this. And I, you know, because sex is just the way to get people in the door because people are excited. Oh my gosh, she's a Muslim and she's talking about sex. Let me see what she's talking about. But once I get yeah. sex in the door, the work is really about um, empowerment. It's about spirituality because sexuality is a part of spirituality. It's about sisterhood, community, service to oneself, service to one's Lord, um, building intimate relationships, not just with a husband, but also with friends. So I don't see myself stopping this work because I feel like this work is really a culmination of all of the experiences that I've had in my life. I used to go to, when I lived in Saudi Arabia, we would go to Mecca for Umrah, you know, frequently. Um, and Alhamdulillah, we had that opportunity. And when I would go, I, I would be in Tawaf and I would just be making dua, you know, Allah, there will be a time when I have to leave this place. Please help me to find my path. Please help me to find my purpose. And I, you know, I started making those duas like around 2012. We moved back to America in 2015. And I just kept making those, those duas over and over again. And I was doing village auntie work, just private, one-on-one -on -one, person to person. I wasn't doing it on social media at all. And I didn't know that this will be my path and that this will be my purpose. And once I got on social media, you know, and took the work to a wider audience, you know, little by little, little, you know, little um, light began to seep in, right? And it was at a certain point during Ramadan of this year where I realized that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was, was answering my dua through this work and that this was a path and this was a purpose that I could follow. So I don't see myself ending it anytime soon. Uh, <laughs> I do have two daughters. They are 13 and eight. And my 13 year old said, you know, mommy, one day when I take over the village auntie empire, and I told her, I hope that by the time she takes over this work, that she does not have to break down the walls mm -hmm. that I'm breaking down now. She can oh do my gosh. the community and the sisterhood because the sexuality piece will already be a norm within our I community. The comments. Um, I can tell you one thing. Um, it's it's definitely needed, like anything um that is new, that is that is presented, that is outside of a shake of a shik. I'm still working on that shik. Shake anything that is Shaking. outside of a shake or an imam going on? or of uh, scholars or different things like that. Anyone that is doing any type of work outside of that and bringing it to communities, it's always kind of um, uh, investigated. You know, people are, are looking at it and trying to understand it. You know, when we started doing this, like I said, it'd be it'd be eight years. It'd be eight years next month for this. And when we started this, it was 
I can't even. I don't even have time to go into it all. Well, look, look. <laughs> I don't even have time to go look, go look, into it all. Vinny <laughs> John T do what she do. All right, that and it's not, that don't mean we go around and say talking to everybody what we do with our spouses. This is what I do with my wife. This is what I do with my husband. That ain't what that means. But you want to seek an appointment with Village Dante and you're having problems in your marriage, yes. uh, she can work that out between y'all. But see, that'll still be a private situation yes, there. Yes, yes. And you're anybody putting all your business out online wine, and all that, exactly. then you just It's a crazy. different story. And that's why we do consultations and speak to people well, in I don't private. know Village Dante Besides talk about the, sex. I don't talk about sex with DP. Uh, you going to be telling me about a how you putting not, your leg all around. Man, huh? please, a little bit, not like that. Girl, ain't nobody swinging, ain't nobody swinging from chandeliers or none of that you stuff. Okay, no position so and stuff. either way, um, Diara looks like she is having um, a little problem here. Uh, Sarah, you've got just question in, but we've got to go, boo. Uh, at what stage in the courting process would you suggest talking about sexual intimacy? Got to um, make it quick. Jante, we yeah. about to roll out. Jante, give her about thirty seconds on that. Um, I would not have a conversation until you're certain that this is a person that you want to marry. So there's already been a discussion about, you know, a proposal that comes up. And I would not suggest that you have that conversation without a third party present. Um, so, you know, sexual intimacy can be talked about amongst the pantheon of intimacy that exists, but it should not be something that just happens one on one because it's too easy for that conversation to go awry and to veer into that, which is haram. And Ooh, we, we didn't hear. I stuff. agree. And we, for, even with a third party, even with a chaperone it. Okay. Like, hey, hey, hold up. Papa. Like, yo, yo. We, here, we ain't right? finna do that right here. Y'all know we here? Okay. <laughs> I wanted to say something really quickly about when something doesn't come from a sheikh or an imam or a scholar. I think that that's something that a lot of people don't focus on. I am religiously trained, right? So I don't call myself a sheikha. I don't call myself an ustaza. But I'm, I'm always working not just in the field of sexual education, but I'm also studying fiqh. I'm also studying Quran. So I think... That is also a shift that we have to have. We have to be more expected, have better expectations of women because we can also be um, scholars and talk about this work. So I think that that's, that's an important point that you made, not to make assumptions when they see someone like me doing this work and think that I don't also know my religion because lots of us do. We just want to focus on the fact that sexuality is also, and sex is also a part of worship in Islam. Yeah, and also, also, and act like these kids make, ain't just, thinking about it. And I'm just going to make this point, and also not being a sheikh or any ma'am or an estada or was a sick scholar or, a, a or whoever sheikhi. it is that they can give you fic, they can give you Quran, and they can give you all and hadith, and that's what they focus on. But people like us give you the 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 missing parts, the holes. The holes, you know, they give you the knowledge, we give you the application. Okay. So that's well, that's and, all and, that's all about. And it depends. If you can if you can read the fic and you can read the hadiths and you can understand it, alhamdulillah. Then you don't then you got everything you need. It's, it's for people who are especially with marriage, who are seeking more on uh how to make a marriage work, how to well how, what your what your what you should and should not do. Uh, again, it's those things, the little trickets that I wish I had a had them gems from them 30, 40, 50 year marriages that I want to give to people that I didn't get. So tell them how to get in touch with you and how they can um, sign up for the Institute and classes and all that stuff you got going on. Sure. They can follow me on Instagram at Village Auntie. That's Auntie with an I-E at the end. They can also follow follow TVA Institute, all one word, on Instagram. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Village Auntie. I'm on Clubhouse um, at Village Auntie. I've been doing some shoot your shot rooms to give you know young Muslims an opportunity to meet each other. And if you, know, you have any inquiries and want to reach out, uh, my email is contact at villageauntie.com. And this this uh, broadcast is not for you to go out and adventure in the sinning. And we appreciate you for being here and taking the time. This has been part two. If you guys missed part one, Uno, it is on our IGTV, Dose. and people are still giving us comments and feedback in regards to that conversation. Quattro. So go back and replay part one, which is at Rufus and Jenny at on our Instagram Cinco. IGTV. C TV. Do hmm? Dace. Oh, shut up. 
cease. Okay. Don't be telling me <laughs> to shut up around here. <laughs> All righty, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. And inshallah, you have been enlightened once again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. All right. Y'all be cool. Salam.